In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. Begin by reading Luke chapter 4, 16 to 22. And keep in mind that after the Lord had said this, the people of Nazareth wished to kill him. One of the things he said is that he was there to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, which is a way of saying a new beginning, of something new has started. And on September the 1st, we begin the church's year all afresh. We start again. It's a good time to think then what it is that we're all about. Well, we can look at our Lord's manifesto from Isaiah and see how well it applies to ourselves. The Lord starts off by saying that he's there to preach good news to the poor. Who are these poor? Well, they're the spiritually poor and the materially poor, both of them. And he's there to preach good news to them. Good news of what? Good news of the coming kingdom. Good news, actually, about the riches of God being poured out upon them. And we might like to think, well, how much do I, or my church, reflect that particular thing? Do we also preach good news to the poor? Or do we keep that good news to ourselves? Do we keep our own spiritual and material riches in our own hearts and our own pockets without sharing them with those who are around us? And if we do do that, we're not doing as the Lord did. Also, the Lord said he was there to heal the brokenhearted. The brokenhearted, those people who are suffering in all sorts of ways. What sort of pastoral work do we do as individuals or as a church? And if the answer is, well, not very much, then that is something also that we must attend to. He was there to proclaim release to the captives. It probably means those people taken as ransom, but also those people who are enslaved. So many people find themselves ransomed, as it were, to their mortgages, to their property. They're enslaved to their jobs or to their situation. How can the Gospel, how can Christ, actually release them from these things? So these things no longer seem so important to them, and status and wealth and position is no longer something that enslaves them. Sight to the blind. You know, several times in the Gospel, the Lord rejects people because they are spiritually blind. Here is God standing in front of them. And although this man is meant to be able to see God and is a great religious leader, he sees nothing at all. But for those people who can see nothing, he gives sight to them, so they see God standing before them. What do we do as well? Are we able to bring the Gospel, to show people the glory of God? Or again, do we keep that shut up safely within our own temples and tabernacles? Liberty to the oppressed. Well, one of the really important things you discover within the Old Testament is how important political justice is. Do we do anything about that at all? Are we thinking about the impact of Christ in his gospel, in his kingdom, on everything around us, the way that our whole society and our own lives actually work? Are we proclaiming ourselves liberty to the oppressed? Are we actually proclaiming an acceptable year of the Lord? Or are we just carrying on as normal? Because if we're not doing things that are to do with the Gospel, today is a really good day to make those things change. The indiction, the beginning of something new, the beginning of a new church year. So today, this hour, this minute, start the time afresh and look forward to doing something new and great for God. But don't be surprised if people want to get in your way and stop you from doing this and find all sorts of impediments, even to the point 
of wanting metaphorically or actually to kill you. Your prayers. God bless you. Amen.